isn't a very good skateboarder, apparently. Um, wasn't wearing a helmet because not very smart, apparently. Um, but had a pretty rough accident on an electric skateboard going about 30 miles an hour, hit the back of his head, was unconscious, uh, and he was being taken to the emergency room uh, at JPS downtown, uh, and I got a call. Um, Titus and Isaac came with me when we went down there and didn't know anything for a while, didn't know anything about his condition, didn't know anything going on. Um, got in touch with his parents. Um, I got to go in, actually, and be the one person in the emergency room with Gabe. Um, and I'll tell you what I found. I walked in, and there's Gabe lying unconscious in a hospital bed with blood coming out of his ears. Um, at that point, they told me he was taking one breath on his own per minute. The machines were doing the rest. Started talking to the hospital staff. They started asking me about Gabe's funeral arrangements. Started asking me what kind of person he was. And really quickly, something rose up on the inside of me. And I said, no, 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 we're not talking about him in the past tense. He's alive. He's alive, he's gonna live and not die. And so through the next uh, couple of minutes, I got really aggressive with the hospital staff. Um, asked a lot of questions, demanded some things, um, and, and just did my best to hear the voice of the Lord and, and get him to where he needed to be. But at one point, I got down in his unconscious face and said, Gabe, listen to me. You're gonna get out of this bed. You're gonna live and not die. And you're gonna come to the bridge. You're gonna preach about the faithfulness of God. And so tonight... In our series on the fruit of the Spirit, to preach about faithfulness, will you please welcome Gabe Perot? Love you. Thank Love you. you. All right, but the last time I gave Gabe a live microphone, um, <laughs> you, can sit, you, you can sit down. Church milk is the, under the chair. The last time I gave Gabe a live microphone, he said some things. Um, he's promised to not say anything like that again. Yeah, I apologize. He's very sorry for the <laughs> things that he said. Uh, I blamed the head injury. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. People are like, what? I was like, the man had a traumatic brain injury, okay? He's going to say some dumb things every <laughs> once in a while. So I thought, what better way than to give him another live mic and let him fully redeem himself <laughs> and talk about faithfulness. I love you, buddy. Thank Get you. I love it. you, too. Nothing like a second chance. Praise God. Well, first, I just want to say thank you to Pastor Stephen and Charity for allowing me to be here. Um, such an honor. Also, thank you to Pastor George and Terry, uh, if they're watching online or however they hear this. Thank you, guys. Uh, can we just talk about how thankful we are for the food? I know I always start out with this, but, I mean, every time I walk in the bridge, I'm just like, oh, I feel the Lord here. I see the food. I'm like, wow. Uh, so, for my groceries, I, like, always get steak. Anybody steak fans? Please raise your hand. Yeah, amen. Look, look at all the saved people out there. So, when I eat steak, I never once in my life have said to myself, okay, I've had enough steak. Like, once I'm done, I'm like, give me another. Send it over, Amen. right? How many of y'all know this Bible is better than steak? Amen? Amen? Now, I know some of you out here, maybe a vegan is watching this, and you're like, okay, what are you talking about? Well, that's okay. You can be a vegan and still love Jesus, and you can love the Bible more than steak. Amen? <laughs> but how many of y'all are hungry tonight for more of Jesus Christ? Amen. 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 So we'll pray, and then we'll get started. Father God, I just thank you for this night. God, I thank you that you are faithful to us. God, I thank you for speaking to us. We receive your word tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 I'm also, I want to say, I'm thankful to everyone that prayed for me. Um, if you were wondering, I wasn't conscious at all when Pastor Stephen said, Gabe, you're going to return six months from now and preach about the faithfulness of God. I was not conscious. I was Audi, like big nap time. And uh, so I just want to say thank you to everyone that prayed for me. Because I wasn't conscious to wake up and read my Bible and pray, right? There were people here on this earth praying for me. And I would just want to say thank you to you guys so much. You never know how much your prayers mean. How many of you guys, maybe you see on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, you see a friend that's maybe going through something, or you hear about a friend that texted you, and you're like, man, I should pray for them. And how many of you guys have prayed for them, but maybe you don't like tell them that you're praying for them, right? Your prayers, whether you tell them that you're praying or not, whatever you're doing in your own private time, it matters so much. You're able to change the world. Just you in your own closet, you can change the world. Amen? Okay, Galatians 5.22, roots and fruits. What an amazing um, just set of messages we've been given by Pastor Stephen. We'll be continuing with that. Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, 22. 
um, says this, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith. Verse 23, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And I want us to notice, go back a little bit and let's look at um, verse 16. Galatians 5, 16 says, this I say then, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Verse 18, but if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. For the works of the flesh are manifest, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, I don't even know how to say that word. 20, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, and it goes on. But I want us to notice something very interesting. The works of the flesh that it's talking about here are our flesh. How many of you guys, when you got saved, as much as I wish that you became a ripped jack, us guys out there, a ripped jack, like football player, best quarterback ever, we, we kept the same body, didn't we? Amen. Is there anybody here who, who got a different body? No? Wow. Good. So you're just like me. So we all keep the same body. Some of us, I think, sometimes we wish. We're like, man, I gave my life to Christ. Now I just want to, like, never have a bad temptation again. Now I just want to have a perfect body. I just want a perfect life. You guys ever thought that? Yeah, yeah I totally have. I know you all are perfect tonight, but I'm going to just be honest with about myself. Is that all right? <laughs> right? So we think this, right? But we keep the same body. And so that is part of this theme of, of the works of the Spirit and the works of the flesh that we're talking about tonight, is the fruit of the Spirit doesn't just happen because the Holy Spirit wants it to happen. You are not going to have joy just because the Holy Spirit wants you to have joy. Trust me, guess how, what percentage of time the Holy Spirit wants you to have joy? 100%. Now, be honest with yourself. I'm being honest with myself. There's been a lot of times in my life I haven't had joy 100% of the time, right? Amen? So we're starting to realize Oh, it's my spirit joined with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians that we are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. It says spirit, soul, and flesh. And so when the Bible is talking about works of the spirit here, fruit of the spirit, I mean, it's talking about our maturity, our growing up in who we really are. Say that with me, who I really am. Who I really am. Say that with me just one more time, who I really am. Who I, really am. I have good news for you today. You are not limited to your body. You are not limited to uh, things that you face down here on this earth. Who you really are, your spirit, man or woman, is born again. You're a child of God. You're born of the most high God. Amen? For those of us that maybe, uh, I'll just be honest, I struggle to work out sometimes. That's good news, right? Amen? Shoot. I'm glad I'm not just my body. Also, I mean, let's be honest. On this earth, our body will, uh, you know, get older, right? Our spirit man doesn't just fade away. Our spirit man gets stronger and stronger. So I used to play football. How many of y'all love the most, the Lord's most anointed sport? Come on. So I used to play, and oh my goodness, don't even get me started. Whew. So when I played it, we played this team Lord, called Lord Botetot. Uh, they were like two hours south of us, and they were a bunch of country white boys, right? And my school that I went to, uh, now am, do I look like a country white boy too? Yeah, kind of, sort of. But anyways, the school that I went to was a country white boys school. The school that I went to was like a bunch of fast talented. Uh, I thought we were going to be undefeated, right? So it was like the first game of our season. And we're driving down there, and I'm like, yeah, we're about to whoop this Lord body tight. We're about to put it on him. They stand no chance. Something I didn't realize uh, as we stood on that field, and I looked across the field, I've never seen such strong white boys in my life. <laughs> Yo, these guys lived at the gym. Like, they didn't, they, like, they never ate at McDonald's. They, like, they were fed the DNA of craziness. Like, I've never seen people so ripped, but they weren't exactly at first, like, I'm sure they weren't born necessarily the athletes that they are now, but they stayed in the gym. I went on their Instagram and was looking at how much they were lifting. They were lifting double of what our team was lifting. Now, you, that might sound impossible, but let me tell you, if you stay in the gym, you'll be lifting a lot more than you think. Uh, we lost really bad. You say, Gabe, what was the score? I don't remember. I'm not trying to remember. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm putting that pass behind me. How many of y'all know the Lord forgives? Amen. Anyways, I really realized that night, man, our team is not just going to stay the same and we can't just do nothing. We need to get in the gym. We need to prepare. Um, how many of you guys know preparation time is never wasted time? That's right. That's Say this with me. Time and preparation, time and preparation is, never wasted. is never wasted. When a couple months ago I was cooking chicken, I was ultra hungry. How many of y'all forget to eat sometimes during the day and then all of a sudden you're just like, why am I so hungry right now? 
Well, that's what I was times a thousand. And I had some frozen chicken that I was about to cook. I threw it in the air fryer. And I was like, I'm going to wait 20 minutes. I'm going to eat this however it looks. I don't care. I'm eating it. So I pull it out the air fryer. How many of y'all know that air fryer is anointed of the Lord? Amen? Yeah. (laughs) That's a gift from God. My goodness. Anyways, well, I didn't use it rightly. I'll tell you how. It's a gift from God, but you need to use the gifts rightly. I'm making a sermon out of everything tonight. Anyways, I pull it out. I pull it out. I start cutting it. And sure enough, it's purple. I don't mean a little bit purple. Like, purple, purple. And all y'all know, all y'all that have ever, I don't know, know about a thing called salmonella. Um, I didn't know what salmonella was. My mom would always tell me. She'd be like, Gabe, make sure you cook the chicken right. Gabe, make sure you do this. But I didn't listen. I'm being honest. I didn't listen. I was like, Mom, I ain't worried about that. So I just took out the chicken. I didn't prepare at all. I didn't put no seasoning on it, so it wasn't even tasting good. But I was just like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, here we go. I got my chicken. I'm happy. Lord, bless this fruit to my body in Jesus' name. Amen. I pull out the chicken, start eating it. It tastes great. Three hours later. (laughs) I'm sleeping. All of a sudden, I wake up and bleh. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry if I creep you out. Sorry, is that too much? The church milk is typing again. Uh, and, and I spent that whole night, didn't go, didn't go to sleep again. And you can guarantee you this. Every minute, I was thinking to myself, I should have waited 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes if I would have waited and just been patient, doing what the Lord told me to do, instead of eating purple chicken. I'd have been okay. Here's the thing with, oh yeah, I'm talking about faithfulness tonight. Here's the thing with God. How many of you guys know that there's been a time in your life where uh, it didn't look perfect? Uh, okay, that should be honest. I remember y'all are perfect, so just me. In my life, there was a lot of times in my life where uh, things were not going well. And when I say things were not going well, I mean I was living very lukewarm. I was like right on the fence with God. I said I love God, but then I was like very worldly at the same time while I was in uh, very early freshman year of high school. But yet God never left my side. He kept believing in me. He kept being by my side. He never left my side. He waited patiently for me. And he knew that I was going to come around. And you think about it, for a very long time, I went without doing what God wanted me to do, but yet he waited. And when I was a freshman in high school, I was all by myself in my room, and I chose to commit my life to Jesus, to really give my life to him. And sure enough, he was there. And he never left my side. And I just wanted to encourage you guys tonight that no matter where you've been, no matter how your week was, no matter what current thing you are in, you are never too far from God. He never stops believing in you. He never quits on you. He never looks at you and says, oh, that, oh no, no, I've waited long enough. I'm, I'm hungry. I, I can't wait. Pull it out the air fryer. He never pulls you out of the air fryer. <laughs> never. Can I hear a Period. Period. Oh, oh, amen. <laughs> um, so when it, when it comes to our life, there's things that we want to see God do, right? Amen. Right? There's places, there's dreams that we have that we want to see us get to. And it's easy sometimes to think to ourselves, oh, why am I not there yet? Why am I not there yet? I just want to get to that place. Why am I not there yet? And it can be easy to just feel like you need to microwave your life. That you need to just put yourself into the microwave and be like, all right, God, now or never. Either now it's happening or never. No. Listen, patience is key. And, and Pastor Stephen was talking about that. But here's, here's what's amazing. How many of you guys know we can love God back because he first loved us? Um, recently, um, when I was riding my skateboard, Pastor Stephen talked about me not, riding, not wearing a helmet. Not only did I not wear a helmet, but God would tell me when I was riding my skateboard through the Holy Spirit to slow down. But guess what I did? Speed up. <laughs> That's all I did. I kept speeding up. I wasn't listening to the Holy Spirit. I wasn't uh, uh, listening to the patience of, Gabe, you can go 10 miles an hour instead of 25. I just kept going. Did God want me to fall off my skateboard and crack my skull and almost die and, and go through that whole process? No, he didn't. But yet me and my craziness, I was like, I need adventure. And then I went through that. But yet, 
Here's what's, here's what's amazing. Yeah, I like y'all laughing. It's okay. <laughs> y'all be yourselves. This preaching doesn't need to be like, like, oh, you just listen like, mm, no, nah, like, vibe with, it, vibe with us tonight, amen? Anyways, uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So here I am now in the hospital. Yeah, amen. Here I am in the hospital as a result of my own craziness, as someone that should have known better, someone that graduated from Bible college, someone that definitely should have known better, but yet I still made a mistake. Yet, in the craziness of times, God was still by my side. He didn't quit on me. He didn't give up. He was faithful to me. And after a long coma, I woke up. I didn't have pain in my head. I didn't have any pain. Actually, the only pain I've ever had since coming back was just a sore leg because I tried sprinting after I first got out of the hospital. And I had just a little bit of a sore leg, but it's not sore anymore, praise the Lord. Okay, I did lose my, half my hair too, but that's because they shaved it. Uh, I was, that was, when I woke up, that was the only thing I was mad about. I looked at myself in the mirror. I was like, man, y'all shaved my head out here? Like, my hair is valuable. How many of y'all's hair is valuable to you? Amen. Yeah. They took away my hair. I was salty about that, yo. Um, I'm telling you this to, to just, again, encourage you. Don't be afraid to be faithful to God in what you have now. He's never left your side. Don't leave his. He's never quit on you. He's kept investing in you in every single day of your life. He still believes the best of you. When he looks at you, he doesn't think to himself like a, a Karen you find at Walmart. Oh, do you have a wristband? <laughs> Are you six feet away? Back it up, back it up, back it up. He's not like that. He's not like that at all. He's not thinking to himself, oh, this person, they've done too many wrongs. I've saved them. I've helped them with the Bible. I've helped them with the word of God, but yet they still go off and do this. No, he's not thinking that at all. He's looking at you and seeing you as family. The fridge is still yours. How many of you guys know? Okay, my family, they live in Virginia. Um, and whenever I fly home to Virginia, I don't even ask my dad if I can open up the fridge. I don't say, Father, may I please uh, step into the fridge? No. When I open that door, I say hello. You know, hi, hello, hug, yeah. And then fridge. <laughs> Immediately. How many of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about? When you were home, when you were home, you didn't question it. No, that fridge is yours. Why? Because you're family. Now, don't go to a random person's fridge. Don't do that. That's weird. But when you're family, it's different. So when we look at God, let's remember he's our father. He's, he's ours. He never left our side. He never stopped believing in you. And um, also, there's some things that God is going to accomplish through you that the devil will work his very best to get you to quit right before they happen. He will work his very best because he knows what's coming. I remember when I first started um, social media. I didn't have much. In fact, actually, I'd never really been on social media. Like, all throughout high school, I wasn't even on social media. I didn't really know anything about it. I thought it was kind of weird. I also kind of, I was like, social media, that's worldly. I'm not going to do that. But God put it on my heart. And I was like, man, I need to start this. Also... I lost all my excuses. Uh, COVID happened, and I got fired at my job, and I had absolutely nothing. And I couldn't say that I was busy anymore. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I, I couldn't say that I was busy anymore. So I was sitting at home, I was like, I need to start talking about Jesus. I took out my little iPhone SE. Uh, you say, how old is that? Very old. I took it out. It wasn't much. So a lot of people would, I mean, it's literally physically little. But I took it, and I just started making videos with it. Little videos, not that good quality. And God took those videos and brought them into now more than 200 million views from something little. Now, I didn't get 200 million views at the start. I didn't get it right away. But every day, I stayed on the grind. Every day, I stayed faithful. And this message that we're learning tonight is just an encouragement. If you've been staying faithful, God's rewarding you. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in the not having it right away. We're a microwave generation. I'm a microwave type person when it comes to my food. I need it right away. But God's been on my heart recently. Gabe, don't be like that in life. He understands that we're like that in food, okay? But don't be like that in life. Turn with me in, um, oh, you all want to know something cool? Okay, this is a little nerdy, but the root of uh, the word faith here in 
in the Greek. Um, so the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. The root of that is uh, pistis. And, uh, and um, it's, well, the root of pistis is pietho, which is to persuade, to be persuaded, which supplies the core meaning of faith. It is God's warranty that guarantees the fulfillment of the revelation he births within the receptive believer. So this faith, this faith thing, thing, it's not something like super extravagant that you need to be like 30 years in church for and you need to like check all these boxes and all those things. This faith is the result of your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And we know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The reason is because if you want to get to know someone, guess what? You got to talk to them. Uh, guys, when you take a girl on a date, do you think it'll be good if you just sit there and not say a word? <laughs> no, that'll be mad cringe. That'll be, what? Like, not even cringe. That'll just be <laughs> scary. You just sit there and don't say a word? Yo, what are you thinking? <laughs> Can I hear an amen? amen. If you want to get to know someone, you talk to them, right? That's one of the reasons why when we hear this word of God, this Bible, our faith is being built. That's why when you read your Bible, when you speak the Bible out loud, you're literally getting to know God more. Your faith is being built as you hear. God is getting inside your ears into your heart, and you're building up. Something amazing about football is I don't care how much you ate. I don't care how fit your parents were, how good your DNA was. If you didn't put it to practice and hit the gym, you'd be struggling. Can I hear an amen? Here's the thing when it comes to our walk with God. God has given you everything you need already. He's made you into his family. He's reshaped who you really are, your heart. Say that with me, my heart. My My spirit man, or if you're a woman, say spirit woman. My spirit man. Good, yeah. We're both men and women, amen? Um, Who we really are, that's our heart. As we build ourselves up in the word of God, and as we put it to work, say that with me, put it to work, then we will get stronger. And the stronger we get, the more fruit we will bear. I don't know about you guys, but when I first heard this scripture about fruit of the Spirit, I was like, man, why don't I have this fruit? Like, God, what? God, you going to do this or what? Is it like, am I just chilling? Like, what am I doing here, God? But we can really start seeing that this fruit of the Spirit, this fruit of our lives, is not just going to come because God's up in heaven, snaps his fingers, and then it all happens. God was up in heaven, and he sent Jesus Christ to you. And he's given us his love. He's given us his life. And he will continue giving us his life every single day. He will never leave us. Now, the key thing here is, what's your choice? What are you going to choose to do? Are you going to quit? Are you going to give up? Are you going to just throw in the towel when you've got to wake up at 7 a.m. in the morning one day? I mean, oh, no, that's tough sometimes, yeah. Oh, just me, okay, okay. How many of us, we got to understand that God will always be there for us. And so it's up to us. Will we continue getting stronger every day? Also, with the gym, how many of you guys know that has ever been to the gym, you always got to, like, look back and be like, okay, I need to do this. Flesh, shut up. Today, I was not feeling like working out. I was not feeling like working out at all. I was like, no, I'm going to preach. I'm not going to work out. I need to, no. I was trying to make excuses, you know what I'm saying? But my friend was like, I'm working out. You need to, you need to come with me. And I was like, man. But that, he gave me that push to work out, and now I'm not. I didn't become a bodybuilder tonight. Y'all don't see me 400 pounds ripped tonight, do you, right? But now, the more I work out, the better I'm going to be. Amen? Amen. Here's the thing. When it comes to our walk with God, don't be afraid to give him every single day. And there'll be times when you're not feeling like you want to read your Bible. There'll be times when you're not feeling like you want to pray, pray in the Spirit, listen to a sermon, love people. There'll be times where you, all you feel like doing is staying home and playing zombies on Call of Duty or uh, just doing, I don't know, whatever it is, right? But keep pushing yourself. You'll get to that place where you want to be. You will accomplish your dreams that God has given you if you'll stay faithful. Amen? Um, turn with me in your Bibles to Titus chapter 1. Look, Titus is happy somewhere back there. I don't know where Titus is at. He's somewhere here. Yeah, he's happy. Yeah. He's got a favorite chapter, huh? <laughs> Titus chapter 1. And uh, 
this, this Greek word that was used for faithfulness or faith here is also used here in Titus. Um, and we'll be looking, I'll be looking at NLT. I have been sent to proclaim faith to those God has chosen and to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. This truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the world began. And now, at just the right time, he has revealed this message, which we announce to everyone. It is by the command of God our Savior that I have been entrusted with this work from him. But notice this, this um, part that talks about this truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie. In our lives, we are used to friends, family members that try their best a lot. But how many of you guys know someone has told you something before and they haven't exactly done it, right? Let's just be honest. And maybe we, if we're being honest, we can look at ourselves and realize we've said things before and then we didn't really mean it. Yeah. Um, here's what's so amazing about God. Everything he says, he fully means. Yeah. He doesn't play around with his words. Yeah. He doesn't tell you something. He doesn't give you a promise here. And then, uh, well, I don't know if that, uh, that can, I don't know if I'll do that for you. He's no respecter of persons. Right. Say that with me. God is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. Say this with me. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ stays, the same. stays the same. Amen. Something amazing that I saw when I, when my body was in the hospital, my spirit man was with Jesus. And he showed me, down on earth, these bridges, these strong foundations of his children praying the word of God and joining in agreement. And he showed me how they were, they were praying and with love and exercising the word of God. He showed me these bridges come together. Here's the thing. These bridges didn't just come together like, um, like straight across. They kept going upward and upward and upward and upward. And they stayed consistent. They didn't quit. They kept going upward to heaven. And I was able to ride down from heaven back down to earth to my body. When I came back, that's the, one of the reasons why I came back. It's because people put the word of God to action. Wow. Turn with me in your Bibles, Matthew chapter 18. And I want to emphasize this too. What I'm telling you tonight, I don't want you to believe me because Gabe is speaking. I don't want you to listen to my opinion. The things I'm sharing with you tonight are not my opinion. What I'm sharing with you is Bible truth. It's Bible supported. Amen? Amen? When we listen to, to sermons, when we are, whatever we're doing, always place your faith back. What does the Bible say? And because some people have, have heard what I'm about to show you, and they've forgotten that it's the Bible, and they said, oh, well, Gabe, you're just talking. No, no, no. If the Bible says it, that's what we hook our faith on. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 18. <laughs> Look with me in... Uh, Verse 19. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Again, I say to you that if two of you will agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it will be done for them of my Father who's in heaven. And that's exactly what happened. Here's what's also amazing. How many of you guys know the Bible says in John 1, the Word was made flesh and dwelled among us, right? So, when you pray according to the word of God, when you find out what God wants for your life, when you find out what God wants for your friend, for your family member, when you pray the word of God concerning them, guess who joins you in the prayer? Jesus does. If you're joining yourself with the word, Jesus joins with you. And that's what happened. I saw these bridges. Jesus showed me these bridges. And I really learned. I had heard this scripture before, but I'm telling you, I'd never seen it like that. I never realized it like that. And ever since I've come back, I've just been much quicker. If something's going on, someone needs prayer, I've been much quicker to go, okay, what does the Bible say about this? What scripture can I hook onto? 
Because sometimes in our life, we can quickly get into a side of like, um, how, do I say, how do I say this? We can get into a side where we're just kind of like saying our feelings and praying our feelings. I'm in it real with you guys tonight, right? There's been times in my life that I've just prayed my feelings. There's been something that I wanted to happen that I was just feeling. For example, when I was a freshman, I was a scrawny little white boy, 130 pounds. It was not very fast. I hadn't hit the weight room yet. And I wanted to start, right? And if I'm just praying off my feelings, I'd have been like, Lord, could you just make me start right now? Change my head coach's mind right now so that I would just start. You know what God would say back to me? Gabe, hit the weight room. Gabe, do what I say, and then you'll start. Thank God I did what he said. And then I went on to start and become the captain. Was I the best athlete on the team? No, not in any way, shape, or form. But I did what God instructed me to do. Do you all see what I'm saying? And in life, if we've prayed things before, don't be discouraged if the exact prayer didn't happen yet or it didn't happen like you thought it would. Instead, run back to this word of God and always trust God's got your back. He hasn't left you. He's got you. He's not quit on you. Remember that time in your life. Remember those times in your life where it looked like you didn't deserve anything. For me, I look back at the time of my life where I was living such on the fence. I was not, I was, I was, there was a time even in middle school, this is really crazy, I would like tell people about God and then I, I would like cuss up a storm of bullying and like being messed up to people at the same day in the same class. I was, I was the, the not a good investment at the time, but yet God still believed in me. Yet God never quit on me. And when I was a freshman in high school and decided to come back to God, he wasn't sitting there like, Gabe, I just, I don't know if I can believe in you anymore. Do you see what you did in sixth grade, Gabe? Sixth grade, Gabe? No, he didn't say that. He welcomed me. And I just wanted to encourage you tonight. God welcomes you. You're his. You are not your mistakes. You are not your failures. Get your dreams up again. Get them to where God wants them to be. The reason you're on this earth, that you're still on this earth, because he has a destiny for you. He has a plan for your life. And there are things that will last for eternity that you can do down here on this earth. And that's not uh, just uh, getting amount, a certain amount of followers or how much food you can eat or how much weight you can lift. Eternity things are the love that we give to one another. Eternity things are the prayers and the kingdom of heaven that we bring down to this earth. Eternity things are, what are you doing with the gifts you've been given? Turn with me in your Bible. We'll close with this. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, well, I, uh, we'll start out in um, verse 19. This was after, basically what had happened was the disciples tried to cast out a demon and then they weren't able to, or they didn't. And uh, then they were like, and then Jesus cast them out. And then verse 19, they were salty. They were like, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast him out? Verse 20, Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say to you, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed. Now, uh, how many of y'all know it's not uh, complicated to know a grain of mustard seed is small? Can you all say that with me, small? small. Okay, <laughs> amen. You will say to this mountain, be removed to a yonder place. It will be removed. Nothing will be impossible to you. What that scripture means is, a part of what Jesus was saying there was this. If you had faith as tiny as a mustard seed. Mustard seed is one of the tiniest seeds even that is possible. He said this, if you will do something with the tiny bit that you have, you will change a lot of things and nothing will be impossible to you. And how many of you guys know Jesus is no respecter of persons? So Jesus isn't going to help Arp out, but then Isaiah, eh, no. He loves Arp as much as he loves Isaiah. 
He loves me as much as he loves you, right? It's pretty simple. He loves Jesus as much as he loves us. So if Jesus said this to his disciples, he's saying it to us now, amen? If we will be faithful in the little we have now, we will be rewarded with much. And that doesn't just, I'm not just talking right now to like pastors or like preachers or people trying to do worship ministry, although those things are amazing and God called. I'm talking right now to you. What are you called to? What are your dreams? What are the passions God has placed on the inside of you? Um, maybe it's politics. How many of y'all know we need some godly po- politicians up in this place nowadays, right? Amen. Ever since they put that old mask mandate, blah, blah, blah. We learned real quickly, oh, wow, my life is important in every area of my life. There's areas and gifts that God has given you that you can be faithful with. And it may not look like, also, we can get into, like, comparing ourselves with other people with gifts. When I played football, I got into that sometimes. I would compare myself to the other strong safety of the other team. I'd be like, man, he's taller than me. He's faster than me. He's got a bigger bicep than me. Dang it. Right? We can compare ourselves. But how many of y'all know if we compare ourselves, we'll never be, be better? Instead of comparing myself to the other person that looked better than me, I, need to, I needed to look at myself in the mirror and understand, wait a minute. I love what I do. God's gifted me to do this. God's anointed me to do this. So I wanted to encourage you tonight. The gifts God has given you, you can be faithful in them. You can fight with them. Don't quit. Don't give up. Maybe if, even if people have spoken things about against your gift, against your talent, against what you want to do, put it in your heart and don't give up. And, you know, ask God how the, the direct wisdom, the next step, say that with me, the next step. Say that with me one more time. The next step. How many of y'all know, okay, I do have a little bit of hop, so I could get to that top, but imagine if these stairs were like this high, right? And if I just tried to jump to the top, all of a sudden, would I get to the top? No. What is the smart thing to do here? Step by step, right? Step, right? Yeah. Amen. So in our life, there's things that we want to get to the top of. You're like, Gabe, I just want a million dollars right now, Gabe. God, send me the money. We're like, Gabe, I just want a Lamborghini right now. Send to God. I just want a $100,000 job right now. God, send it. Can I be honest with y'all? You need to take some steps to get there. Right? You're not, you're not just going to go to an employer and they're going to say, what's your experience? What have you done so far? You're not just going to go to them and being 12 years old and say, oh, I'm just born, so hire me. You got to be faithful, right? Do something with what you got. Here's what's so amazing. You, we can do this. Because God was faithful to us. For me, there's been so many times that I just remember a time that God was faithful to me when it didn't look like I was doing everything perfectly. It didn't look like I was everything right, but yet God was still faithful to me. And when I remember those times, naturally, I am just drawn and I just want to love him back. So I would encourage you, as we close tonight, I would encourage you, remember that time. Remember those times that he's been faithful to you. He still sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you. After everything you left him, after everything you did, and yet Jesus was on that cross thinking about you. He loves you and believes in you. Also, I think what's amazing, he said nothing is impossible. Don't limit yourself. I don't know about you guys, but can I, the best technicians should be those who walk with God. The best Tesla makers, the best politicians, the best doctors, the best uh, shoemakers, the best designers, the best preachers, the best fill in the blank. You can say social media content creators. Just fill in the blank. Whatever it is that's on your heart. <laughs> Nothing is impossible to you. God's got you. He's got you. He's not quit on you. He's never left you. And whatever season, whatever thing you are, are seeking, ask God for the next step. God, what can I do now that will help me get to that next step? How many of you guys know this? Now, I don't know this that. I mean, I'm not married. But how many of you guys know? I do know a little bit about a relationship. How many of you guys know in a relationship, you got to, like, there's steps to it. You don't just see someone instantly and you're like, marry me right now. I mean, that's a Netflix show, but how many of y'all know that doesn't go well, right? (laughs) 
I mean, it is a little bit entertaining, but no, it doesn't go good. <laughs> There's steps to a relationship. There's getting to know someone more and more. So if a guy looked at a girl and was like, will you marry me right now or what? And the girl, if she has common sense, she's going to be like, no. If the guy in response is like, okay, so I have no chance with you, bye. First of all, that's childish. But second of all, do you think that guy will ever get to know the girl? No. She's going to think he's a crazy. Yeah. Amen. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. When it comes to our life, there are things that we want just right away. God, fire it up. Give it to me now. But yet, God has already given you what you need. How many of y'all know he's already given you Jesus? Is there anything that's bigger than Jesus? The perfect son of God? And he's already given it to you. So don't, you, you got to choose to not get salty about not getting the exact thing at the perfect time and everything working out in life. Don't get salty. Instead, be mature, be strong, and understand, wow, God, you've already saved me. God, you've already forgiven me. God, you've already washed me with the blood of Jesus. God, you've given me a breath in my lung. God, you've kept me alive. 19, 20, 25 years, however old you are. God, you've kept me alive. God, you've given me shoes on my feet. How many of you guys know once you start this path, those start firing it off. The earth rotates at 1,000 miles per hour. Most people don't understand that. If the earth were to stop rotating right now, all of us uh, would not be good. <laughs> Yet God has kept that earth rotating at the exact perfect speed we need to live every single second of every single hour of every single day. But that's not something we naturally think about. How many of y'all thought about that before we came in here today? Neither did I, honestly, until now. I'm remembering it because I thought about it uh, like two weeks ago. I'm telling you this to remind you, if you want your faith to be strong, if you want to, to accomplish what God's will is for you down here on this earth, you've got to make a choice to be faithful in what you have now. But you can be faithful in what you have now, not because of your own strength, but because God has been faithful to you. When I see people in the hospital now, or I hear about someone in the hospital, my faith has risen to be able to pray for them, to be able to be there for them, because I know how much God was there for me. I know he never left my side. When I hear of someone that maybe feels like they're lukewarm or on the fence or they're struggling with a certain area, I, I, I more relate to them. And I understand, hey, I've been there, but God brought me out and he'll bring you out too. And these are the good news. This is the good news that I bring to you tonight. This message I've given you so far is not just some nice fairy tale. This is not some nice things that God did just for me. No, he's done it for all of us. We have a reason to be thankful. We have a reason to be faithful. And when we are faithful with what he has given us, we'll change the world. How many of us, we all say, I want to change the world. Yeah. We're in little first graders. I'm going to change the world. And that's good. You are. But now you're understanding there's a way in which you got to go about to change the world. And now you know it. And final thing. I know that's preacher's famous last words. They say final thing. And then <laughs> three hours later. But I'll try not to be three hours later. When it comes to how we go about our next step, there will be a feeling of, well, I tried that before, or I, I was kind of going that direction before, but then it, it didn't work out. And God, and you start remembering a mistake you might have made. You start maybe remembering a, a sin. Here's what's so amazing about God. The Bible says in Hebrews, their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Here's what's amazing about God. When he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross, how many of you guys know he's not a liar, right? How many of you guys know Jesus was perfect? Yeah? Come on. He's the perfect righteousness of God. It was the great trade-off. Arp has a really dope sweatshirt on right now. I have a country flannel on right now. Now, 
I think my flannel is cool, but anyways, let's just imagine my flannel is sin. Let's imagine Arp's sweatshirt is the righteousness of God. Perfect. When Jesus was on that cross, he took and became this flannel and then gave us his sweatshirt of righteousness. He fully became your mistake. He fully became your craziness. He fully became all the failures you've ever had in your life. He fully became it on that cross. And how many of you guys know when it nailed to the cross, it was fully nailed. They didn't hold back on Jesus. Your sins and your mistakes have been fully taken care of. The price has been paid. Stop trying to pay the price on your own. Stop trying to be good enough for God. Stop. Jesus is. You don't have to be good enough on your own. He is. Amen? Amen. The reason why we face shame and guilt and the reason why the devil throws it at us is because the devil knows that if you will understand this, if you will understand what Jesus has done for you on the cross, you will accomplish God's will. You may think it's too late that you've just fallen too many times, that God had a plan, but then you didn't follow it, and now you're just off. God always has a way to bring you back. He always has a recourse. I guarantee you, you get back on that recourse, you get back, you, you make one simple choice. How many of you guys know that, that son of the father that left and was living with pigs and eating some nasty stuff and going wild? How many of you guys know he started, he chose that he was gonna go back to his father, and he started walking back to his father. How many of y'all know his father didn't wait for him to get to the house? His father couldn't wait. His father saw him from a distance. I'm a white boy, so don't run that fast, but his father God runs faster than me. Sprint. He couldn't help himself. God can't help himself from sprinting after you. So tonight, we will, it's always good when we're gathered together There's a unity here that we can experience more of God even more. And as we all take this time that we've committed, God will speak to you. He speaks to us at at all times. But I, I just sense my heart right now, God has been speaking to you. There's an area of your life that he's lovingly calling you to be faithful in. He's encouraging you. You got this. Some people think it's just about believing in God, and that's, yes, it's believing in God, but God believes in you. Wow. He has faith in you. How many of y'all know maybe you've had a friend before that just didn't have faith in you? They talked bad about you. Maybe they said stuff about you. They just weren't really for you. God is not like that at all. He's completely for you. He's all in. All his chips are into you. The good news is his chips don't just stay with us. We're going to give his chips back to him. And we're going to give his chips to those around us. That's why the Bible says, love God and love others. That's exactly what we're doing. When we're faithful to God, we're returning his love. You say, God, you gave Jesus, I'm returning my life to you. I'm giving my life to you. And I'm going to give my life to others. Whatever it is that that passion, that gift that God has given you, think about it and then think about how you can help others. For example, a firefighter has a passion to be adventurous and go into crazy things and take care of stuff. But then the way that they really use their gift in an awesome way is they think about that and then they're like, oh, I'm going to help people that need to get out of craziness. See, see that translation? For me, I, I knew that I wanted to speak and I knew that I wanted to help my generation understand who God was. But then I thought, how do I get to them? And I was like, duh, social media. I started up and it's gone well. So with every gift in your life, think to yourself, how can I love other people with this gift? And as you do that, God will move. Where love is, God is. Amen? Amen. 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 Stay with me on your feet. And uh, if you will, close your eyes. And just put your hand on your heart. Repeat these words after me. Father God, God, 
I thank you for Jesus Christ. I thank you for loving me. You never left my side. You never quit on me. You've always been there. You're here with me now. And you'll be with me forever. Jesus, I love you. I choose to love others. I choose to love you. Thank you for giving me breath, salvation, forgiveness, the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit. I will be faithful in everything that I do. God, I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. As Gabe was talking, um, it's just quickened in my, in my spirit so strongly. Um, a couple of things. Uh, number one, that maybe you're here tonight and, and you need healing in some way. Yes. Healing in your body, but also I've been sensing this all night long, that he's close to the broken hearted. Heart. Yep. Yep. And he heals broken hearts. Yes. Yes. And so if you're here tonight and you need healing for anything whatsoever, I, I want to invite you to come to this altar. I believe there's an anointing in the room because God's faithful. God's faithful to heal broken hearts, to heal broken bodies. The doctor may have said, this is your diagnosis, this is your condition. But God said, he's a healer. He's a restorer. He's a deliverer. So if you're here tonight and, and you need healing, in your body, you need healing in your soul. Whatever it is, I want to invite you to come to this altar. So there's an anointing that breaks yokes. And I've watched the healing power of God move. In this body that they said would die. And in others, and I just want you to know that God's so faithful. God's so faithful. And he's a healer tonight. Broken hearts, broken hearts, loss of relationship, shame. Yeah. Go ahead, say it. Say it. It's when Gabe was speaking about how God doesn't give up on you. I just sense that there's many that carry that shame, like God's not into me anymore. He doesn't have a plan for me anymore because I keep messing up and I should be further along. Mm. And that healing power can break that shame off. That's you right. As well. That's right. That's right. Now, you might think like, well, I haven't been very faithful to God. Yeah. Well, it's always a good time to start. Yep. Yeah. Right. He's been faithful. He's never stopped being faithful to you. Yep. And now's a good time to start returning that, just like yeah. Gabe said. So let me pray, and then we're gonna we're gonna worship. We're gonna sing. And if you're in your seat. I would encourage you, just press in, worship the Lord, and extend your faith to those that are here to receive healing tonight at this altar. And if you're in your seat right now and you thought, man, uh, maybe I'll go up. No, just don't say maybe, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Father, I thank you for the healing power of God in this room, for broken hearts being whole, being mended. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For bodies being whole, being made whole in this place. Chronic conditions being eradicated in this place. Things that we were told we'd live with forever. Here in the presence of the great healer, Lord, I ask that you would move and that you would erase things. And Lord, for shame that has held us back that has held us back, Lord, that the healing power of God would break that off tonight. Lord, we worship you. We thank you. 
We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what we're going to do. For what you're going to do and how we're going to respond to what you're going to do. Lord, we thank you in advance. We see ourselves now. Yeah. Come on, stir up your faith now. And begin to see the healing power of God moving in your situation. Begin to see the healing power of God at work in your body. Come on, just receive it. Nobody's got to touch you for you to receive it. Just receive it right now. Just receive it right now by faith. Injuries being healed. I see that joints, ligaments being healed right now in Jesus' name. Crooked things being made straight. Crooked backs being made straight right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Digestive systems being healed right now. Digestive systems. Diagnosed digestive system problems being healed right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, stir up your faith to receive it. Stir up your faith to receive it. Come on, with faith. That's what we talked about tonight. With faith. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. And when we respond with faith to his faithfulness, there is no mountain that can't be moved. There is no sickness that can't be healed. There is no broken bone that can't be mended. There is no broken heart that won't be made whole tonight in the presence of the healer. Come on, we respond with faith to a faithful God. We respond with faith to a faithful God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody watching live online, depression being broken off of you right now. Depression can't stay in the presence of the healer. If you struggle with anxiety, if you struggle with panic attacks, come on, he's a healing God tonight. He's a healing God. Your body, your mind, your soul, your heart, he heals it all. The sacrifice of Jesus was enough to heal it all. There's no sickness bigger than him. Hold on, man, I'll sing it. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
like a flood. I don't care what it looks like. I'm so in love. I'm coming like a flood. I'm coming like a flood. I don't care what it looks like. I'm so Take it all away to love that's left is you. Take it all away. Take it all away. Take it all away to love that's left is you. Take it all away. Take it all away. Take it all away to love.
Oh, there's an anointing here. Whatever it is you need. Whatever it is. He's a healer. He's a healer. He's a healer. Take it all away, take it all away to love that left is you. We want what you desire, fill us with what you desire to love that left is you. We want what you desire, we want to desire to. Oh, and all that's left is 
Holy Spirit, great Holy Spirit, we receive tonight, we receive tonight, Holy Spirit, we receive more of you tonight, we receive more of you tonight, fill every piece, every place, every hidden part, everything we've held back, Lord, we release to you tonight and say, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, fill, Holy Spirit, overflow. Overflow, Holy Spirit, in every place, in every place. Just receive right now. Well, what does that look like? Ah, it doesn't have to be pretty. It's not a formula, it's a fire. Holy Spirit, receive, receive. Receive, receive. Burn out that which doesn't belong. Burn out that which doesn't belong. All we want is you. All we want is you. All we want is you. Oh, Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. God, you're so good, you're so faithful. God, you're so good, you're so faithful. God, you're so faithful. You're so faithful. So Lord, tonight as we go, God, I thank you that the Holy Spirit goes with us. That you're in us and you're on us. And Lord, we go into every part of our world, our classes, our homes, our families, our jobs, and the Holy Spirit is in us and the Holy Spirit is on us. I thank you that this healing Holy Spirit is in us and on us. And that you move, Lord, would you move? Would you move through us to heal? Would you speak to us? Would you assign us to those who need to experience the healing power of God? Body and soul, body and soul. If your broken heart got healed tonight, it is your assignment to go be an agent of healing to someone else. If your broken body got healed tonight, it is your assignment to go and lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Come on, this isn't just a church thing within the walls of this building. This is a church thing within the body of every believer. Healed and whole, body and soul tonight. Lord, tonight we seal by your spirit that which you've done. God, I'm asking that there would be no more room for doubt, that the enemy would not steal the word that was sown tonight, but that it would accomplish that which it was sent forth to do. That it goes down deep into the hearts of every person who was here, every person who watched. And it would continue to do so. That it would continue to do so. I've never said this before, but there's somebody who's watching this not live. You're watching it weeks, months in the future, and the healing power of God is moving right now. He's healing an irregular heartbeat in you right now where you're watching. A broken heart mended in Jesus' name. Lord, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. You healed not because we were good, but because you're good. You healed because you love. You healed because you love. 
and we receive it by faith in the mighty name of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's getting better and better. It's getting stronger and stronger. I would not be here next week if I were you. I'd be right here. I'd be right here, and I'd bring somebody with me. God's about to break this thing wide open. Come on. Don't miss it. All right, until next week, remember God loves you. We love you. Gabe and I love you. We love you. We do. Come on, can we get it for Gabe tonight? What a word. What a word. I love you. I'm proud of you. All right, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. See you next week.